practice every day and you've started a whole new process called a whole new life. And if you keep up that process, not only with your health habits, but with your money habits and with your communication habits, with your sales habits and management habits and every other habit that you've got, if you'll start that process, eliminate the errors and replace it with disciplines practiced. I'm telling you, you can start this process of life change immediately. After today, you don't ever have to be the same again, only by choice. Errors in judgment, disaster. A few simple disciplines, wealth beyond imagination. Let the miracle of everything that's available work for you and start working on the inside. Work on your philosophy, work on your attitude, work on your personality, work on your language, work on the gift of communication, work on all of your abilities. And if you'll start making those personal changes, I'm telling you, everything will change for you. Work on yourself, then you bring more value to the partnership, to the marriage, to the franchise, to the corporation, to the enterprise, to the community, to the nation. Self-development, personal development. The best contribution you can make to someone else is self-development. Not hasty if it isn't required, but don't lose much time. Here's the time to act. When the idea is hot and the emotion is strong, that's the time to act. Don't use the excuses they use. It's called the language of the poor. Switch gears, switch language, switch ideas, switch strategy. Start with the simplest of disciplines. And don't be mean any of these disciplines. The smallest of disciplines starts the process of life change. And if you'll invest in this thing called discipline, you can have whatever you wish. It's called the beginning of a miracle. If you will get better, everything will get better for you. What a clear message that was for me. He said, if you'll change your philosophy, if you'll change your habits, if you'll refine your thinking, if you'll change and accept some new disciplines, if you'll turn the corner where you've been in the past, go for a new life for the future. He said all kinds of remarks. Anyone who can make you angry becomes your master. When you're testing to see how deep water is, never use two feet. The soul is eternal and imperishable. It is not subject to birth or death. Bhagavad Gita Be impatient with actions, but patient with results. A man can be himself only so long as he is alone. And if he does not love solitude, he will not love freedom for it is only when he is alone that he is really free. The past is gone. The future is not here. Now I am free of both. Right now, I choose joy. Deepak Chopra I'm very aware how quick life can take from you. And I've always prepared my mind for the next chapter. And what happened with me was I started this thing called front loading. So when I was young, I used to be a little piece of sh Oh, I'm not good enough. I can't do this. I can't do that. But the second I got my head out of my ass and I realized, man, you can achieve a lot of if you get off your ass and you start moving and you start motivating yourself. So I became a self-motivator. So I started front-loading. And front-loading is people, man, you've done so much by 47. Because I don't know what tomorrow is going to bring me. So my, my military resume is fat. You know, I did a lot in the military. I did a lot outside the military. I've, I've, I've made money. I've, I've, I've done almost every race out there, hard race in the world. I've broken pull-up records. I've done a lot of sh So when these bad times come, and also, not like, like, not only that, like work your ass off so, so you can enjoy. Yeah, yeah, you're taking a shot. You know, you, you may not live to be old, but what if you do? And you worked your ass off when you were able. And you were able to get up early, able to grind. If you front load it properly, the back half of your life is money. And that's what I did. And this is one thing about life. This is why you always must be ready. Always be ready. Never get ready. People go, oh, hey, what are you training for, David? I ain't training for shit. When something pops up, I'm ready. So when Cam popped the fuck up and Cam calls, hey, man, I'm going to be in uh, Las Vegas. You want to go for a run? Sure do. Sure do, brother. 
<laughs> sure do. While the run sucked, I was ready. We ain't got some steak. Same day. Saying, oh, we worked it out, dude. Whenever me and him are together, you can guarantee it's going to be two people that love each other, but are waiting for the other. How we should behave to tyrants. If a man possesses any superiority or thinks that he does when he does not, such a man, if he is uninstructed, will of necessity be puffed up through it. For instance, the tyrant says, I am master of all. And what can you do for me? Can you give me desire which shall have no hindrance? How can you? Have you the infallible power of avoiding what you would avoid? Have you the power of moving toward an object without error? And how do you possess this power? Come, when you are in a ship, do you trust to yourself or to the helmsman? And when you are in a chariot, to whom do you trust but to the driver? And how is it in all other arts? Just the same. In what then lies your power? All men pay respect to me. Well, I also pay respect to my platter, and I wash it and wipe it. And for the sake of my oil flask, I drive a peg into the wall. Well then, are these things superior to me? No, but they supply some of my wants, and for this reason I take care of them. Well, do I not attend to my ass? Do I not wash his feet? Do I not clean him? Do you not know that every man has regard to himself, and to you just the same as he has regard to his ass? For who has regard to you as a man? Show me. Who wishes to become like you? Who imitates you as he imitates Socrates? But I can cut off your head. You say right. I had forgotten that I must have regard to you, as I would to a fever in the bile, and raise an altar to you, as there is at Rome an altar to fever. What is it then that disturbs and terrifies the multitude? Is it the tyrant and his guards? I hope that it is not so. It is not possible that what is by nature free can be disturbed by anything else, or hindered by any other thing than by itself. But it is a man's own opinions which disturb him. For when the tyrant says to a man, I will chain your leg, he who values his leg says, Do not, have pity. But he who values his own will says, If it appears more advantageous to you, chain it. Do you not care? I do not care. I will show you that I am master. You cannot do that. Zeus has set me free. Do you think that he intended to allow his own son to be enslaved? But you are master of my carcass. Take it. So when you approach me, you have no regard to me? No, but I have regard to myself. And if you wish me to say that I have regard to you also, I tell you that I have the same regard to you that I have to my pipkin. This is not a perverse self-regard, for the animal is constituted so as to do all things for itself. For even the sun does all things for itself, nay, even Zeus himself. But when he chooses to be the giver of rain and the giver of fruits and the father of gods and men, you see that he cannot obtain these functions and these names if he is not useful to man and universally he has made the nature of the rational animal such that it cannot obtain any one of its own proper interests, if it does not contribute something to the common interest. In this manner and sense it is not unsociable for a man to do everything for the sake of himself. For what do you expect? That a man should neglect himself and his own interest? And how in that case can there be one and the same principle in all animals? the principle of attachment to themselves. What then? When absurd notions about things independent of our will, as if they were good and bad, lie at the bottom of our opinions, we must of necessity pay regard to tyrants. For I wish that men would pay regard to tyrants only, and not also to the bedchamber men. How is it that the man becomes all at once wise, when Caesar has made him superintendent of the close stool? How is it that we say immediately, Felicion spoke sensibly to me. I wish he were ejected from the bedchamber, that he might again appear to you to be a fool. 
Epaphroditus had a shoemaker whom he sold because he was good for nothing.